I'll keep it a bit closer. Just like this? All right, thanks. Um, so I'm giving a, a short overview on our programs, what we are, what our challenges are, a uh, brief introduction about Galera. I assume that everyone knows how Standard for SQL replication works. Uh, then tell a bit more about how we use Galera within SQL games. Uh, things we have learned from uh, from our challenges with Galera and future technologies we want to incorporate in here. And uh, finally, some conclusions regarding uh, how we think Galera is performing within our environment. So, first of all, Spill Games is a gaming company, as you might have figured from the from our name. The uh, company was already founded in 2001. Uh, we have about 350 employees worldwide. We have about 180 million users globally uh, visiting our websites. And we have over 60 million registered users. Um, our reach is on 45 portals, mostly localized in languages. So we have a lot of localized names like Yetspeed.de or Spellingfist.nl or Games with Code UK. We mostly offer casual games, social games, also known as the Facebook games. Uh, we have a couple of real-time multiplayer games, mobile games, and since the beginning of this year we also have a, a, a crafting game. Uh, to support this we have about 35 uh, MySQL clusters, and they together do about 60k queries per second, which is about 3.5 billion queries per day. And all this has to be highly available, so that's quite a challenge from time to time. Uh, to show you a bit more about what the challenge also is, we have a geographical reach where we have uh, the majority of our business coming from Europe and also South America and North America are focus points. So, a bit more about Galera. Galera, in contrary to uh, normal MySQL asynchronous replication, it is actually a synchronous replication method. It's created by Codership and it was created as a plugin on top of MySQL. It supports InnoDB and MyISAM works as well as you commit transactions within MyISAM, which is useless normally. Um, it allows you to cluster all your nodes together, where you have a minimum of three nodes in the cluster to keep it highly available, but you can bypass that by using the Galera arbitrator to stick to two nodes. It's not advised to do that. Uh, within this cluster one, the <coughs> machine is uh, considered to be the, the primary component and this uh, actually controls the whole cluster. So it takes decisions which nodes should join or should not join, uh, transfer states between nodes. So if you look at how it actually works, it's simple and effective like normal MySQL. Well, you can just connect and read and write to any of the nodes in the cluster. So that's already a quite huge benefit on top of normal MySQL replication where you have a master-slave relation and slave is not writable. Uh, the synchronous replication of Galera, which runs underneath the service, will take care of everything and it will keep your whole cluster in sync. If you take a small look inside the, the replication itself, basically once you commit your data, Galera will actually ask the other two nodes in the cluster whether it's fine to commit this data and only whenever these nodes agree that this data is fine to commit actually the master will write the data and then shortly afterwards it sends out the OK to the end user and only then it will start to write the, the data onto the slave nodes like this. Um, the cluster itself is highly available, however, from a client perspective, that's not the case. It's not out of the box, so you have to control everything yourself from your own servers. That means that your own servers have to be aware of all the nodes in the cluster. So if one of them goes down, you have to take care of it yourself and contact one of the other nodes. You can obviously uh, solve this easily by adding a load balancer or a query router like MaxScale or MySQL Proxy more about that later, uh, or install load balancers like HFProxy on your local clients. <coughs> and then, of course, you get a lot more connections going on to your cluster. Uh, another solution 
is to keep the load balancer still splitting your reads and writes, and just elect one node to actually take the write load and let the other ones do the read part. Um, the big benefit of doing this is actually that you can have only one node doing the writes, so there cannot be, can be no collisions between two nodes. So the synchronous replication will actually be faster than if you start writing to all nodes at the same time. A um, uh, short introduction on how actually you can add more nodes to a cluster. Um, it's very simple, you just add one new node. The new node then requests the cluster to, to join in. The cluster will elect one of the nodes to be trained. And it will only allow the cluster to write to two nodes. Why does it do this? Because it wants to have a clear, um, it wants to have a state transfer done, and it can only be done by freezing the actual node. So then it will actually start doing a full state transfer uh, from the, my, the, the drain node to the new node. Once that has been performed, it will actually be able to get back into the cluster, and the cluster will be extended to four nodes. A bit similar is the incremental state, which allows you to have an existing node that already is in your cluster or has been in your cluster uh, to rejoin your cluster. It simply requests to join a cluster. It will do an incremental state, so it will only copy the the, um, the yes, thanks. The right set of um, since the last state transfer, and <coughs> the other benefit of this is actually that you can also use already taken backups, place them on a new node, and have them join the cluster without draining any nodes in the cluster. Um, let's see, Galera also offers uh, one replication, um, and this keeps your uh, nodes across the whole internet all in the same state. So you have one data center in Europe, one in, in the US, and by doing this, it actually keeps your whole cluster in the same state at all times. However, because the, the, the cluster needs confirmation, from the other side, it actually adds latency on your on your replication. So that means that within uh, your your replication of any query, it will actually have uh, uh, ex an extra amount of time taken before it actually gets committed. So the round trip times uh, between the ocean is approximately 300 milliseconds. So that adds a latency per query that you actually want to write of 300 milliseconds at least. Another issue with uh, uh, some of the Galera versions currently is that in Galera 2.6x, it actually tries to write to each and every node in your cluster. And it tries to get consensus out of that. And if you have two data centers that actually have to be keep, kept in sync, it will also create five, uh, five rides across the ocean. And in Galera 3.0, they will actually do this by electing only one single node per data center to actually do the replication between the two data centers. So Galera becomes data center aware. Within still, we are using Galera, and I can only show that by giving some examples of the systems we already use. We have the majority of our databases are within legacy systems. And these legacy, legacy systems are things like comments, ratings, uh, so the like buttons, uh, avatars, profiles. And that's all done on the MySQL master-master system where we keep one master active and one inactive. Then we also have another new technology. It's called the SSP, the Still Storage Platform, which is our sharded environment. And we started off by using MySQL master-master as well. Uh, but this is still going to be phased out uh, by using Galera for this. We also have another application called ROAR. It's uh, an abbreviation for read-only alternarily. 
Um, and we are going to use Galera for that to keep it in sync between uh, the uh, two data centers that we are building currently. If you look at the master master setup that's built, I'm going to show you this because I want to point out that actually this is quite flawed. We have an active master and inactive master keeping each other up to date using asynchronous replication. That means that you can only use one of them to actually do your writes. And the other one, you can use them for read-only traffic. We do this by using floating IP addresses handled by MMM. You, can, you have a couple of other solutions that do similar things, uh, MHA, if I'm correct, and uh, the Percona uh, replicator. Uh, and we can even scale this out by adding multiple read saves, adding more floating IP addresses. Obviously, this will quickly exhaust floating IP addresses within, within our data center. Um, so if you are going to move from these older machines, we can easily take, uh, in this case, a backup from the inactive master using InnoDecomX, cloning it into the new machine. And then we just load a MySQL, uh, we stop the replication between the inactive master and the new node, and we make MySQL dump into the, the new uh, Galera cluster we're building. Because we know when we stop the replication, we actually know also when this node within the Galera cluster is going to be slaving from the inactive master using traditional MySQL replication. I forgot to mention that Galera actually is a plugin, so it allows you to still use older <coughs> MySQL replication methods. So in our case, we just slave from an active master or inactive master into the Galera cluster. And by doing this, we can also consolidate some of our legacy clusters into one big Calera cluster that has a very huge write performance and allows us to get rid of the older legacy stuff. The reasoning is going to be clear later. Um, also, if you want to scale this, because consolidating three databases into one actually uh, we, we should be able to scale that a bit better. So if we want to scale Galera, we can easily add a new node by the methods uh, told before. Or we can actually make use of the standard MySQL replication by building new asynchronous slaves. Uh, it might not make sense to do this, but actually we can create slaves this way that filter out anything regarding uh, the other databases that are consolidated within Galera. Let's see. Uh, so why should we consolidate our legacy systems? Well, first of all, we have about 20 legacy database clusters. That's a huge amount of them. Uh, which roughly boils down to 50 servers in total. That costs us a lot of maintenance compared to Galera. Galera handles everything itself. Uh, and we need to replace them. Uh, 35 of them will actually be older than three years in 2014. That is a very big challenge. But that actually means that we have to migrate or replace these machines anyway. So if you look at the maintenance it costs to actually clone these machines into replacement servers, why not immediately consolidate them within Galera? Currently we have tested this in our OpenStack lab and we're very happy that it actually works the way we thought it would work. Um, so it's going to be rolled out soon to our production uh, legacy systems and consolidate most of them into one single Galera cluster. A bit more about our uh, storage platform. As I told you, it's a, it's a storage API between uh, the application side of us and the databases. It um, abstracts the whole data layer from the application. In this case, all of our data is sharded or based upon user, upon function, and upon location. So we could actually shard our data on, uh, for instance, data center. We could shard it on function, and we could also shard it on user level. So individual users can now be migrated, for instance, to archive nodes that have really, really slow storage, 
uh, while active users are kept on really fast servers. Um, <coughs> every cluster we currently have within this still source platform uh, contains two masters that actually also contain two shards. So both servers contain both shards and write their data interleave. That means that we have high availability for both of the shards. If one of them fails, the other one can take over. And if you look at the, at the picture, uh, the, the storage platform will write to shard one, which replicates to shard two, and vice versa. On paper, this looks like a brilliant plan. However, it turned out that it wasn't. Um, in this picture, you can see that we write to both of the shards. We use MMM to keep them highly available using floating IP addresses. <coughs> So if one of them fails, the other one takes over. Normally that wouldn't have been an issue, but uh, MySQL replication is asynchronous, it's single-threaded, and it also meant that, in this case, when we repaired this master, we were never able to catch up again using MySQL replication. So that was a major design flaw within our uh, highly available sharded environment. So therefore, we very much were eager to use uh, Galera in this case. Um, in this case, we can just write to any node, we can just write to any shard. In, it, uh, in our picture, it will contain three shards instead of two. And this way, we can ensure that all of them are in, in uh, the same shape, the same state. The current state of our uh, platform is currently we have four old style master master shard nodes. Uh, lucky enough, we weren't that far with uh, deploying that. Uh, currently, we have six Galera clusters in there. Uh, six Galera nodes using uh, in cluster that uh, boils down to two of them. But we can add Galera clusters whenever necessary. What have we learned so far from uh, our Galera implementation and our big journey towards that? Uh, one of the things we encountered was creating backups. We like to make backups of everything, keep it, uh, send it off-site to uh, Glacier. Um, and within the there are two ways to actually make a backup. Uh, one of them is by issuing a state transfer. So you just pretend you're a new joiner, you will get the full state from the Galera cluster, you store that somewhere on disk, and whenever you need it, you can rejoin the cluster. Uh, that's using either MySQL uh, or any backup apps. Um, or the other way is using the regular InnoBack of X executable, adding uh, the Galera info uh, option. And to ensure that you have a clear state dumped, you have to actually desync the machine from the cluster. Uh, to compare these two to each other, they're, they're quite similar. Uh, basically, it's just like a new node joiner with a backup receiver that requests uh, a state transfer. The cluster drains a node. Uh, and it starts to do the state transfer, and once it's done, you have a node that has um, uh, that, that, that has a certain state within the cluster, and you can also create a backup out of this. Um, going back to our own solution, uh, we have a, a piece of software called Backup PC that also makes backups for us, uh, for our databases, makes do normal file system backups. And it already uses Inno Backup X, so I'd rather reuse that solution than start to invent the wheel again. So if we then desync one of the nodes, we decide ourselves which node it will be. We can stream the backup using Inno Backup X. And then sync the node back into the pool. And, and using it this way, we simply didn't have to change anything at all from the side from, uh, from our own inf uh, infrastructure. Second thing we're doing, uh, we're also restoring backups, and not just because we have to, but simply because we think backups should be checked. Uh, also, these restored backups can be used for, uh, to prevent the state transfer within the Galera cluster, so that's a nice benefit. And to actually verify our backups, we uh, have automated verifi verification method 
that just restores a randomly chosen backup onto, uh, onto the backup verification machine. It installs the, the necessary MySQL version, performs some basic checks, uh, checksums, looks whether uh, the, the machine comes up again. However, with Galera, uh, we actually would like to have it enable the, the, the synchronous replication again. We already found out that in our backup solution, it would pass all the checks so far, but still couldn't join the cluster in the end. So therefore, it would be very nice to just backup uh, or restore one of our taken backups, have it join in the, in the cluster, have it get the incremental state transfer, and then see whether it's able to catch up. Um, using it this way, we can really verify whether the, the backup is fine, and not only fine for using it for disaster recovery. Um, monitoring, that was also quite challenging, because you can do cluster monitoring, uh, so you just <coughs> look at the number of nodes within your cluster. You can give a warning when you have two, uh, a critical at one. Uh, we check the availability of the addresses. So availability monitoring is quite easy. Uh, however, on the load balancer side, we want to add a couple of node checks. Um, we found out already that um, whenever a, a machine would come back up within the pool after a restart, it was still loading the LRU. And by still loading the LRU of 96 uh, gigabytes, it could take like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, while the MySQL port was already open. So that meant you know, possible. Um, so what, what actually happened was that we started to write already to this node. So we want to have node checks there that actually verify whether this has been done already. Uh, performance monitoring uh, is also one of the things we like to do. Uh, Galera introduces a whole lot of new metrics to keep track of. Uh, for us, it was quite easy to add them because we have our own MySQL strategy implementation that allows you to just add anything with Vs wrap. And one of the major components in there was Vs wrap flow control. The flow control actually tells you how well is your replication doing. It indicates the usage of your replication threads in a number uh, from 0.0.2 to uh, 1.0. And it's recommended to stay below 0.1. Uh, that's 10% of your replication threads are blocked. Adding more nodes to your cluster will not actually solve your issue here because it's actually a write performance issue. And as the whole synchronous replication will open up even more replication threads to other machines, it will not solve anything. <coughs> Instead, you just increase the number of replication threads within your cluster. And advice is to use twice the number of CPU cores in your machine, but what if 64 of those threads is not enough? How do you close the floodgates? Um, well, from our side, the SSP can maybe uh, uh, stop writing to these nodes, but it will not stop our problems. So we haven't figured out a way to actually um, fix this, I hope your talk will actually give a better answer to that. No? Too bad. Uh, so one of the things we bumped into, version updates, it's like a breach, you just drain one of the nodes from the cluster, you update it. Uh, however, we bumped into uh, one of the issues where uh, Percona XODB cluster changed their way of doing the state transfer, which was incompatible, so we had to take down the whole cluster upgrade it all at once and then continue. The state transfer was, by the way, uh, an error by us. Um, availability of after restart, I just mentioned this. Um, the LRU was still loading, so we had degraded performance on the cluster. And we had some indescriptive errors during state transfer, which was due to us not providing the correct root password but it was actually performing it on the local user uh, authentication. So in, in, in my case, I started my SQL D using sudo and was trying to do the SST under my user name, which is a bit weird for a process that runs as root, or as my, my SQL, sorry. 
Um, schema changes is also a challenge. We haven't had schema change so far, uh, but uh, the schema changes will be applied to all nodes at the same time. You cannot have uh, schemas all being in sync. So we hope we can uh, fix this by using uh, the Pocona schema, Pocona schema change, but it will not solve all our problems. Future for Galera with its buildings. Well, one of the things we currently want to offer to our OpenStack cloud is a DAS to our internal customers. So we see a use case for Galera here. Uh, we can easily spawn databases this way in OpenStack. Uh, add more nodes if necessary, and it's a lot more easier to automate everything around Galera than around normal MySQL replication. Uh, we also want to mix and match Galera with regular MySQL replication to actually be able to uh, replicate in and out from OpenStack. Model replication, I already mentioned that we are going to use that for uh, not a data center solution. Uh, we currently have no need for that, but the game catalog in the raw database actually might uh, be the one that has to be replicated across the ocean. And uh, currently we just wait for Galera 3.0 to uh, give us the feature of data, era, uh, data center awareness. Thanks. Uh, Max scale, it's something we are currently testing for Sky well. There's talk later today about it. It's a MySQL uh, <coughs> router. It works flawlessly within our lab. Uh, it's not been tested with uh, uh, Galera and MySQL replication next to each other. Uh, and MapScale itself is not highly available yet. Uh, so you just run it on one instance and there's no way uh, MapScale will keep track of other MapScale instances. So you have to fix that maybe with people like me. Conclusion, uh, very quickly, Galera definitely lives up to uh, the expectations we had. We did find some decreased cluster performance uh, compared to normal MySQL nodes due to the way it replicates, but at the same time, because of the increased replication threats, it actually offers us better performance if you look at asynchronous replication. It was a high investment in time for us to actually get here. Uh, but our maintenance is easier and it was well worth the investment for us. So, thanks. Uh, for the, the presentation can be found uh, on the URL or a slideshare, and I'll be outside for questions.